Welcome to the Sunday morning worship experience of the Williams Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, where Reverend Dr. Dwayne Crew and Sister Nancy Crew are our pastor and first lady. We are located at 1630 15th Street in the Garden City of Augusta, Georgia. Join us on Tuesday at 12 noon for our noonday power prayer. Wednesday night Bible study with our pastor at 6 o'clock p.m. And Thursday morning Bible study at 10 a.m. with former and retired pastor Reverend Jean R. Dean. Don't forget to sow a seed into our ministry drum. Give a buy, take now, or mailing it or dropping it off at our church. Stay connected with us via social media or our website at William. missionary anniversary amen the, the, the church is filled with missionaries this morning so glad to have all of you uh, let me first apologize for those of you who are on our various uh, venues Facebook and YouTube that you uh, there will be a tape delay broadcast this morning so thank you for coming back and listening earlier uh, but those on the conference call, I have them here, Donnell, as well. It is so good to see all of you. These are our announcements. In the good news department, congratulations to Sadashi Holly, who will be graduating from Spelman College this morning with a Bachelor of Arts in History. She is the daughter of Brother David and Jocelyn Holly. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations this morning. All right, we got a couple thank you cards here this morning. Uh, thank you for caring and showing that 
you do. Sincerely, Sister Doris McGee, I'm enjoying my Mother's Day candy. Amen. And we have another thank you here from the Franklin family. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and when my song and with my song, I praise him, Psalms 28 and 7. Uh, Reverend Crew and the members of Williams Memorial Family, truly, a verse above is an expression of my current attitude. Indeed, the outpouring of love and support from you and my church family has and continues to be special to me and my family. The birthday calls, cards, love offering, visits, and surprise drive-by they were more than I could have imagined as I celebrate the blessing of being on this earth 99 years. However, it is the prayers that I am offered on my behalf that help me to be grateful for the people that God has placed in my life to help me along with spiritual and earthly journey. Please know that my heart is full and my family and I are grateful for each of you. A special thanks for those responsible for the birthday tribute, uh, assisting with the drive-by and sharing their blessed event with me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers 6 chapter verses 24 through 28. Signed, Brother John Franklin. Amen. We wanted to make his 99th one of the most memorable of all. Thank all of you who participated in it. Don't forget to join us on Tuesdays for the Noonday Power Prayer beginning at 12 noon on the conference call number. Church conference will be held on Tuesday night, May 17th, 2022 at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The Senior Adult Ministry will hold Wednesday a a meeting at 12 noon, uh, May the 18th, 12 noon, via Zoom. Uh, we will have attorney uh, Emil Johnson will be with us. He'll be discussing wills, living wills, power attorneys, and more. That's on Wednesday, 12 noon, via the Zoom call-in number. Augusta Sparta Virtual District Conference will be held on May 21st, at, uh, beginning at, I believe, 9 that morning. Please call the church to get your login inform information. Don't forget to join us for midweek service replay on Wednesdays on Facebook and YouTube. This week, because of the senior ministry, the replay will begin at 1.30. Uh, don't forget, so or see, we want to thank you, those of you who have been, been using PayPal, Givelify, uh, and sending in, dropping off, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, and we thank you for all that you do. Now for our sick and our shut-in list this morning, Sister Margaret Armstrong, Sister Dorothy Burley, Sister Ruth B. Crawford, Sister Ruthie Davis, Sister Dorothy Dix, Sister Judy Drumgrove, Brother Edward Fletcher, Sister Janie Franklin, Brother John Franklin, Sister Gloria Freeman, Sister Evelyn Griffin, Sister Betty Joseph, Sister Jacqueline Lawrence, Sister Deborah Little, Sister Lucy Madison, Sister Viney Meadows, Sister Barbara Pulliam, Brother James Pulliam, Sister Frances Wilson, and Sister Mary Cruz, Sister Shirley Darby, Sister Bobby Dorsey, Sister Mary Frail, Sister Cynthia Harris, Brother Michael Holt Sr., Sister Lula King, Sister Evelyn Powell, Brother Johnny Powell, Sister Chanya Walton, Sister Donna Wilson, and Sister Ernestine Wright. Please remember all of these uh, persons in your prayers throughout the week. And now let me introduce our worship leader, Sister Mary Camp, all the way from Mulberry, CME Church, Lincoln, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, our worship leader this morning. If I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that they are traveling wrong, then my living, oh, my living shall not be in vain. Good morning. Good 
Good morning. Today we are here to celebrate the 111th Women Missionary Anniversary, where their theme is Reach Your Arms Around the World. We will have prayer by Sister Jada Bonk from Hosey Memorial CME Church, Sparta, Georgia, followed by Scripture, Old Testament, Sister Ruth Douglas, Woodlawn CME Church, Harlem, Georgia, New Testament, Sister Brenda Thompson, Trinity CME, Augusta, Georgia. Good morning, church, to the pastor, to the guest speaker, and to all of God's children. Let us go to the throne of grace. Right now, dear Lord, it's your humble servant coming before you as humbly as I know how. Thanking you, God, for this day, a day we haven't seen before and a day we won't see again. But God, because you touched us with a finger of love and woke us up early this morning, God, we say thank you for today. Thank you for finding our families doing well, everything in place, and everything that we need, God, you have supplied. For that, dear Lord, we just want to say thank you. Got so much to thank you for that I can't even thank you enough. The more I thank you, the more I think of other things that I need to continue thanking you for, God. Thank you for your traveling grace and mercy down the dangerous highways. Thank you for allowing us to come to the house of worship one more time to give you glory, honor, and praise, God. For you are worthy of all of our praises, God. And we want to say thank you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the food that we had to eat, God. For the nourishment that it gave to our bodies. But dear Lord, thank you for coming into the house of worship to bless us with the food that shall carry us through next week, oh Lord. God, anoint the speaker's lips of clay as he feeds us and fills us with what we need. For whatever we want, you've got it. And we want to say thank you this morning. Thank you, God, for this missionary program. Thank you for everybody who came to assemble. Thank you and bless each and every family and household in the name of Jesus this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for peace. Thank you, Lord, for happiness and joy and love, God. Thank you for being that Savior who loves us unconditionally and in spite of all of our wrongdoings, God. Creating us a clean heart, a renewing us a right frame of mind, God, to continue to worship you and lead others to Christ, God. Thank you, Lord God, for that old dreadful disease of coronavirus. Why, Lord? Because it has allowed families to come together, God. Come to unite and love one another again. But God, we want that disease to go to the sea of forgetfulness. Continue to heal the bodies of those that it has stricken in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you for all that we do in life and continue to be a servant to uplift and build your kingdom. Then, God, bless our children. Continue to cover them and keep them. Let them know that they have to learn how to lean and depend on you for themselves. We can pray for their coverings, God, but they need to know you in the free pardons of their own sins, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All I can say is thank you right now, God. Bless your holy name, Jesus, for you are worthy, Lord. And when it's all said and done, and we've come to the end of our journey, oh, Lord, give us a home somewhere, a resting place that we can breathe out our lives more sweeter than we think. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, I pray. And all of God's people say, amen. This morning's scripture will be coming from 1 King chapter 17, verses 7 through 16, using the new King James Version of the Bible. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a wi widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup. 
that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the job oil run dry until the day of the Lord send rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the job oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. church. I shall be reading today from 1 Peter 4th chapter verses 10 through 11, the New International Version. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. We want to thank Sister Ball for taking us to the throne of grace. Also, Sister Thompson and Sister Douglas for reading to us from the tr book of life. Next, we're going to have our Sunday School Review by Brother Gregory Matthews. Following that, we will have the welcome by Sister Carol McFarland, and then we will have a selection from the Voices of Inspiration Praise Singers. Good morning, church. Good morning. Freedom and the Law is the title of this morning's lesson found on page 313 in your lesson commentary. The devotional reading is Galatians chapter 3, verses 18 through 29, and the background scripture is Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, Paul began a discussion about justification through faith. He reiterated his teaching because, as he mentioned, the Galatians had forgotten what he had taught them. Paul begins by describing his personal argument about how they were justified by faith. He asked them to remember how they received the Holy Spirit and from whom. It was Paul's greatest concern that they had been misled into believing that they received the Spirit by the works of the law. In a continuation of his argument based on justification by faith Paul pointed out in Galatians chapter 3 the example of Abraham whose faith was counted to him for righteousness. Also, he stressed that God will justify the nations by faith and those who had faith in him will be, would be blessed like Abraham. Paul reminded the Galatians that whoever lived by the works of the law was cursed. However, through Christ, they had been redeemed from such a curse. 
The priority of the promise over the law was quite evident according to Paul. Given that the law was given 430 years after God made his promises to Abraham, Paul began a discussion about the purpose of the law. He informed the Galatians that the law was added because of the transgressions that ended when Christ came. It served the purpose of confining everyone under sin until promise, the promise by faith in Christ could be fulfilled. Paul proceeded with a practical explanation of how they were justified by their faith in Jesus Christ. It was through the act of faith they had received Christ and had been baptized into him. Paul finally reminded them that they were all one in Christ and there were no restrictions based on race, gender, or class. It was time for the Galatian church to mature. First, they needed to acknowledge that they were no longer under the law as the way to attain God's righteousness. They were heirs of God with full familiar rights to God's promises. Second, they needed to realize that following the law of Moses no longer marked the children of God. Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, male and female, all could inherit God's blessing. Is there something in which we place our faith that is other than the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Embrace Christ and live confidently as sons and daughters of God. When it comes down to it, do we stand with Paul on the bedrock that all believers are one in Christ Jesus? Let us pray. Our Father, thank you that we have, our Father, thank you that we are your children through faith in Christ Jesus. Help us to live in the freedom we have as heirs according to the promise of your Son. Good morning. Good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Williams Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Today we are celebrating our 111th Women's Missionary Society anniversary. Thank you for joining us today as we continue to pray and strive for a clean heart and right spirit with God and all our neighbors. On behalf of the Women's Missionary Society, our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dwayne Crew, our leading lady, Sister Nancy Crew, and the entire Williams Memorial Church family, I extend my heartfelt and warmest thank welcome. Thank you.
thank you, Brother Matthews, for that Sunday school review. We're going to stand with Paul. And then Sister Carol McFarland gave us a heartfelt welcome. You should feel welcome anytime you enter into the church. So, but she gave you another welcome. So please kick back, relax, and let's enjoy. And now we're falling in love with Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, the voices of inspirations, praise singers. We're going to continue on with a memorial tribute from Sister Michelle Dasher, followed by our historical highlights, Sister Sandra W. Tom Thomas. And then we will have the introduction of the speaker, Reverend Dr. Dwayne M. Crew, and another selection from the Voices of Inspiration Praise Singer. would normally be the time that we give tribute to those missionaries that we have lost during the past year. But at this time, we do not have the names of anyone that has gone on to get their reward. So happily, I will be happy to just read a short poem entitled, No Tears in Heaven. There are no tears in heaven, not grief of any kind. <laughs> I leave this final teardrop to those I've left behind. Though absent from the body, I'm present with the Lord. The joy of my salvation is now my full reward. And just as God has promised, he's wiped my tears away and nothing can compare to that wonderful day. So keep me in your memory and know that up above, there are no tears in heaven, instead, there's only love. Thank you, and we honor all those that we have lost in the past. Good morning. The historical highlights of the missionary. The Missionary Society of the Williams Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church was organized in 1911. The exemplary work that was done by the Missionary Society through the years can be attributed to the dynamic and effective leadership of its members. Over the 111 years, we have had 21 women to serve as president, and our present president is Sister Catherine Riles Bush. On February 11, 1952, Four adult circles were organized under the pastorate of Reverend Robert Anthony Lark. They were the Premier Pratt Circle, the Mitty Colvin Circle, the Rosa Mac Sally White Circle, and the Mance Jackson Circle. In 1955, Sister Nadine Wilson organized two circles, the Mitty E. Coleman and the Morning Glory, which was later named the Rossi T. Hollis Circle. Over the 111 years, to list some of the accomplishments of the missionary, it provided clothing and monetary donations to the needed families, visit to the local nursing home for Christmas caroling, assisted the Red Cross, provided uh, assistance to the Southeastern Burn Unit housed at Doctors Hospital, coordinated the Meals on Wheels for the Elderly on Saturday, provided cheer baskets at Thanksgiving and provided Christmas food bags. Under the Bridge Ministry, we gave out toiletries and blankets to the needy. Volunteering at Savannah Place and the Golden Harvest Food Bank, participated in the Adopt-a-School Project with Langford Middle School 
and provided book bags, clothing, and bus incentive donations to the school, participated in the district queen contest, donated school supplies to the Innovation Academy at Morgan Road Middle School, participated in the Connection of Haiti project by sending six homemade dresses to the girl, successful shopping trips were planned, gave a monetary donation to the T.W. Josie class of 1994 to their annual Feed the Community for Thanksgiving event. Through the years, we have continued our tradition, which was so nobly began it in the past. We have added innovations as we strive to fulfill the admonition of Christ. Go and tell the news to all the people. We have made a conscious effort to become systematic in our ministry to the needs of the people and to support those civic causes that are in keeping with the principles of our mission. We challenge you to sharpen your awareness of the responsibility to share in the work to be done in the field of, of this mission. When that call comes, answer quickly and without reservation. Here am I, Lord, send me, send me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, before I introduce the speaker, uh, I want to thank the missionaries for, uh, recently we, re, we redesigned our food bags. It used to be we gave people food bags that they could take home and cook and distribute, but it occurred to us that most of the people that are coming don't have a home. So we redesigned our bags to include things you can just pop open and eat while you walk. And so I want to thank the missionaries for, for doing that. We had developed some new bags. And last week, uh, a couple people came, stopped by the church and wanted some food, and we gave them the bag. And, and they, all as they always do, they opened the bag, looked in, and said, man, we got some Vienna sausages. <laughs> and it made my heart jump with joy to see that that's what they could eat, something they could use. So I want to thank the missionaries for taking the lead on that and doing that. Now, um, I, I, I was supposed to introduce the speaker, uh, the Reverend Dr. B. Johnson, all the way from Woodland CME Church in Harlem, Georgia. Uh, the B is for a big word. Uh, he preached here last year, and he put this big word on us, and I still hadn't got the word, Mac, 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 uh, Mac something. And so after the voice of inspiration, the next voice you will hear will be the Reverend Dr. Big Word Johnson. <laughs> Yeah. 
by the waves and the currents that seem so Father, we thank you for this day and for what you have done for us, not just yesterday, but for what you're doing right now. Holy Ghost, we ask that you would speak to us. For our backs are against the wall. We need to hear a word from you today, Lord. Speak to us and speak through us for your glory and for your honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Uh, I want to give these wonderful voices a hand. Don't we want to tell God thank you for them? They have surely blessed us this morning. I wouldn't dare open my mouth to try to do anything, uh, amen, in this moment, amen. I want to say to this very fine and big-hearted pastor 
and First Lady Reverend Dr. Dwayne Crew and Lady Nancy Crew, greetings to my brothers and sisters who join in both the blessing and the burden of being a preacher to this most regal missionary president and all of those missionaries whom I see. Each of you look wonderful. You just look marvelous. We, we want to say to the officers and the members of Williams Memorial and to the family and friends of this church, we greet each of you in Jesus' name, and I certainly would be remiss. I'd be downtrodden. I'd be falling down if I didn't talk to my own president. Amen. Sister Douglas and the church family whom I serve, the Woodlawn Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. And so all of you, I say greetings in his name. I stand to declare, as David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, I'm going to try to move, uh, yeah, without being loquacious, but I, I, but, but I got to say, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Uh, so, some, some years ago, as I look at your text, your text, your theme, missionaries, happens to be, reach your arms around the world. It comes from that pericope, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. May I read it in your hearing just in case you don't remember it. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light an oil lamp or a candle and put it under a basket but they place it on the stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The Lord bless us as we hear his word. Some years ago, my favorite R&B singer, excuse me, I, I know that you good and saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and you've been, you, re, you listen to nothing but spirituals all your life and uh, good hymns, but, but every now and then, I, I remember, I recall, my, my R&B singer, Luther Vandross who sang lyrics to that song, that hit song. I know you want to. And these are a few verses of that song. He's, he, say, he sings in that, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that song, if only I could read your mind, I could heal your broken hearted. I could mend you when you are falling apart. I want to love you, I want to care, but there's not a thing that I can do, not until you say that you want me there. And that you want me to love you forever. I know it's what you want, though it's, it isn't easy to say that you don't. I know you want to, <clears throat> girl. I know you want to. I'm not ashamed to say to you, you all I ever wanted. I know you want to, <clears throat> Girl, I know you want to so turn around, come to see me now. Is it worth it all if there is no love? I, 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 I considered my sisters and brothers this Vandross ballot and thought it might be a great place of departure for our God talk this morning. I, I thought this ballot important because it seems Luther has somehow stumbled on the meaning of Jesus' words. Discovered in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. 
in a Greco-Roman paganistic sin-laden time, Jesus, according to the Matthew writer, is center stage teaching the apostles and a crowd of an estimated 12,000 people or more. Oppressed and depressed and despondent and fearful and untrusting and brokenhearted and economically stripped and emotionally battered and psychologically bruised and almost hopeless women, men, boys and girls as to whom Jesus speaks to in this text. But you know, he also speaks the same thing to us in this day. It was a brutal and hard and life-changing time for most of Jesus' listeners because Emperor Augustus Caesar and his thuggish military saw very little injustice in how they taxed and treated the ordinary citizens of the empire. Trouble was everywhere. Angry and violent people were everywhere. The care of neighbor was thrown out proverbial windows and doors like last night's bath water, caught in a number two tub. In these times, to these people who lived in desensitizing era of space and time, does Jesus speak? And really, Jesus says to his disciples, hold on to what you have. And strangely, the people listen for the voice of the Lord. I, I, hope, I hope you heard what I said. I said, strangely, they, they didn't listen for CNN. They didn't listen yeah, for Fox News. They didn't listen, but they listened to hear the voice of the Lord. They quiet themselves long enough to hear the message of the great preacher, teacher, who says to them, first, play, he says to them, you have a place in this world. And so missionaries and saints alike, I want you to know you're not just stumbling around in this world. Just because God, yeah, has, is so busy that he can't use anyone else. But the truth of the matter is you are here because God has a place for you. And while you stand in your place, you ought to have your arms open. <laughs> Jesus says to them, you are the light of the world. The meaning of the statement is what the luminaries of the, gal of the galaxy, the sun, the moon, and the stars, who join in corporate order are wonderfully given the God-given purpose to shed light in a formerly light-forsaken galaxy, those who hear his voice on this day are the ones who are given God-given responsibilities for shedding light in a dark world. And saints, I want you to know it, 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 is, not, it is not about justice in a dark world. It's really about just us. You're going to get that later on. Yeah, yeah, and, and so I stopped by to tell you, God has a place for you in this world. You ought to lift up your voice every now and then and say, no, it's not just us, but it's everyone. Yeah, God holds the whole world in his hands. Oh, y'all going to help me preach? Uh, yeah, 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 and so every now and then, missionaries of Williams Memorial... Good news is that God has a purpose and plan for your lives. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, like that, I'm like that writer who says, they said, they said you wouldn't make it. They, they, they said you wouldn't be here today. They said for the most part you would never amount to anything. But, 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 but good news, I said good news, you're still holding on. And don't you ever... Let go of God's hands. Hold it while you're reaching your other arm. Hold it. Yeah, hold it. Yeah, God and the people are depending on you to stand near God and hold on to God's unchanging hand as you reach out to them. Secondly, turn to your neighbor and say, he's almost finished. 
Jesus declares their outcomes of meeting with God. Says Jesus, you are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Now, some biblical scholars argue that when Jesus uh, said that, Jesus evidently was sitting in a place on a hillside where he was able to see Nazareth, a hilly city, that place where he was born. Some others say, no, he, he evidently was sitting somewhere where he could see Capernaum, another healy city. Yeah, that place where Jesus had headquarters of ministry. Then someone else said, no, no, Jesus surely was sitting on the hillsides of Jerusalem because Jerusalem was, was the place where the temple was located, where worship happened. And so surely Jesus was somewhere near there. And, 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 and so the truth be told, it really doesn't matter where Jesus was sitting. He does remind everyone who is a believer that you are put on display. You cannot be hidden. God has brought you out of obscurity. God has brought you out of darkness. God has put you high. Even when others have tried to bring you down, God has given you a voice. When others told you to hush, every now and then, when you, when you hear them tell you it don't take all of that, you ought to tell them you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know how he saved me. You don't know how he delivered me. Every now and then, you ought to tell the story. You ought to tell it. You ought to tell it. You ought not be ashamed. You ought to tell it. Even when you pass the meat market. Yeah, you ought to tell it. You ought to tell it. Oh, you are a city. Yeah, that cannot be here. You know, one of my favorite commercials is that commercial, and I, and I promise I'm going to come on in. Is that, that, is that, that commercial, Motel, Motel 6, where they say we leave. Well, all of the travelers, the weary travelers, yeah, if you can't find anywhere else to hang out, we'll have a light on here. Yeah, every now and then, every now and then, we ought to tell somebody. We, we see that you're weary. We see that you're struggling. We see that you're depressed. We see that you're oppressed. But guess what? I've got a light. And the light stays on. If you call me early in the morning, if you need me, call me. I said, you ought to tell somebody. If you're sick, the light. I said, the light. I said, the light. I said, the light. Yeah, the light is still on. Well, 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 some years ago, I heard, I heard, I heard. That preacher was having revival services. And, uh, uh, yeah, while having revival services. Uh, 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 yeah, he, he was doing so well that, that a young man came in and sat with his pants hanging not around his waist. Are you, are you going to talk long with me? Had braids, uh, yeah, that were long and down his back. Yeah, he, he didn't have on a shirt and tie. Just had on a, a regular pullover. But the preacher was preaching so well until when he heard him as he passed along the way. The young man came in and sat down in the back of the church. And as the preacher began to preach, the young man reached in his pocket, took out a match, struck it, and held it high in the air. The preacher ran down. The evangelist ran down and blew out. <laughs> blew out. Excuse me. Blew out. Blew out the match. Well, the preacher came back to the, yeah, to the pulpit. Kept on preaching, talking about Jesus is. My shepherd. 
Jesus is my rock in a weary land. And so the little boy reached in his pocket and struck another match and held it higher in the air. Preacher ran down, flustered now, ran back to that last pew and said, blew the little boy's match out. Yeah, y'all. I, I promise I'm about to take a seat. And then preacher came back to the pulpit and began to talk about he is my weary, my rock in a weary land. He is my walking stick from earth to glory. He is bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. The little boy reached in way down in his pocket, pulled another match out, struck it, and held it high up in the air. Preacher became frustrated. He said, little boy, I've been down there two times and I've blown out your match. Now you're trying to strike another one. In fact, you have it lit and held in the air. He said, he said, brother, brother Stewart's, take him out, take him out. Yeah, but one of the missionaries stood up and said, oh pastor, May I tell you something? The little boy, he doesn't mean any harm. The little boy, he doesn't mean any harm. He is deaf. He is deaf, but he feels vibrations. He's mute and he cannot speak. But every, every time he strikes his match, he's saying, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine. Yeah! I've stopped by to tell the missionaries, strike, strike, strike your match. Hold it high in Augusta. Hold it high in Georgia. This little light of mine. program. We're going to have remarks by Sister Catherine Bush and then Reverend Dr. Dwayne Crew. But before I take my seat, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be your worship leader. And I want to leave you with some advice from a tree. Stand tall and be proud. Go out on a limb. Reach for the sky. Adapt to change. Branch out. Stay grounded. Remember your roots. Drink plenty of water. Get rid of dead wood. Be confident. Never stop growing. Bend before you break. Turn over a new leaf. Enjoy the view. Thank you and have a blessed week. Good morning, church family and friends. 
It has been a wonderful day today. I'd like to start off thanking my worship leader, Sister Mary Kemp, who did my job, her job, and everybody else's job this morning. Job well done, Sister Kemp. I won't go down the line individually thanking everybody because Sister Kemp did this. She went alone. Williams has been here 111 years, and we've kept the lamp, the light lit, and we will continue to do it until death do us part. I've had work with some wonderful missionaries, and when I say wonderful, I really mean wonderful missionaries. The years I've been here, they've stood behind me and stood with me. So all I can say, we memorial, keep going forward. I like to uh, say hello to our oldest missionary, Sister Ruth B. Crawford. Uh, as of May the 25th, she will be 107 years old. And we'd like to give her an early birthday wish. I like to thank my pastor, who always behind me. Whatever I ask him, he's behind the missionary. And the missionary is behind him. Our speakers this morning, job well done, Reverend John. This is your second time speaking for the missionary. So we really enjoy you every time. And we're going to continue to keep our light lit. And we are always open. Missionary, we more missionaries always open. I like to thank my program participant. No matter who I ask, I didn't get a no. It was a yes. No matter how far I asked them to travel, they came. Sister Balk, I want to thank you for that prayer this morning and that long journey to get here from Florida, Georgia. Amen. That was a journey, and we really appreciate it. And missionaries, I want to thank you for helping me get together this wonderful program. This has been a wonderful program. I cannot say anything that went wrong this morning. God handled everything, and he made sure our light kept burning today. So I'm going to turn it over to our pastor, and y'all continue to have a blessed day. And thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank all of you for coming and blessing us with your presence this morning. Again, uh, we will rebroadcast this today for those who are going to miss it. And then again, it'll be rebroadcast on Wednesday. Now, 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 Reverend Big Word Johnson. Now, I'm going to ask you to come do the doctology, but you ain't going to leave without a song. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Dr. John. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some lonely nights <clears throat> When I think around, look around And think things over All of my good days Outweigh my bad days I, I won't complain Can I just try just a little bit more? I've had some good days Anybody else been there? I've had some hills to climb Oh, I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights when I look around anybody here a witness and thinks things over all of my good days Outweigh my bad days I, I won't complain 
This is why I won't complain. Go. to me. Do I have any witnesses? Yes, he's been good to me. He's been better than you or you or you or even I could be. The Lord's been good. The Lord's been good to me. He tried tears away turn my midnights into day so I'll just say thank you Lord thank you Lord I I won't complain I, I, I'm going to let you go but, but many of you don't know that in October my 35 year old daughter was lost to me in COVID. January. In January, you, you all don't mind me just before I fit. In January, yeah, my little five-year-old grandson was lost to me in COVID. And just this month, Woodlawn don't even know it. Until now. Because you know, you get, to, you get to a place where you get tired of talking about stuff. My little four year old grandson was lost to me in COVID. But God, God, God. God's been good to me. Yes, he's been good to me. May the Lord, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord, may the Lord keep you. I said may the Lord lift up the Lord's countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. And as you leave, don't go with sorrow. Go rejoicing, knowing that this little light of mine, I'm still going to let it shine. Amen? Amen. All right, chickens have died. Let's not let the sacrifice be in vain.